Hello! So today we're going to uh, talk about Technicolor. We talked about this a little bit last year uh, in film one, but we're going to talk about it today uh, because this film that we're about to watch, The Red Shoes, heavily uses Technicolor. Uh, so this is a film, as you see, about love, art, and creative obsession. But first, let's talk about color film. So Technicolor was the primary coloring process in Hollywood from 1922 to 1952. Um, and during that time, they made hundreds, thousands of Technicolor films. Uh, and every single one of these films had to be overseen by Technicolor. They had to have a consultant from Technicolor uh, working on the film, and they had to have permission to use Technicolor. So uh, Technicolor is very unique, and it's why old colored films look different from contemporary colored films. Um, it it's a process that creates um, a highly, highly saturated color, Excuse me. So all of the um, colors are kind of brighter and more intense than uh, real life. Initially, Technicolor was primarily used for musicals and animated films, um, as well as like biblical epics, because these films had bigger budgets and they also uh, had better opportunities to use color because they were big, larger than life sort of things. Um, but then uh, Technicolor did become a little more prevalent uh, eventually. Um, how Technicolor works, it's a very involved and expensive process, uh, which we're going to look at in just a second. But the very basic explanation is that you have a camera that records three different uh, film strips. And then you record, uh, sorry, you take those three strips and it, one records the green, one records the red, and one records the blue. Uh, and then you flip them to their negatives and then composite all of those to create color. So we're going to watch a video that's going to explain that a lot more thoroughly than I did. So go ahead and uh, take a look at how Technicolor changed movies from Vox. This is a super interesting video. All right, so hopefully pull that up on Canvas or on the PowerPoint. If not, do it now. And let's talk about Technicolor. Okay, so as you saw, um, Technicolor, the really cool thing about Technicolor too is that uh, you could use it to tint your film. So you could add more red, green, or blue, or uh, the CMYK, so cyan, magenta, and yellow. Um, and you could add more of any of those colors to sort of create a different mood or tone. So it's really neat because all of those colored films look really different. Whew. Every time I'm recording, I yawn so much. Um, so we're going to look at one of the last films, major films to use Technicolor, which is The Red Shoes. And this film was produced in 1948. This was uh, directed by Michael Powell and Emmerich Pressburger, who were a really famous filmmaking duo from the United Kingdom at the time. It was shot in Britain and in France, and it's based on Hans Christian Andersen's fairy tale or fable of the same name, The Red Shoes which uh, they will explain in the film, but is basically about a girl who wants this pair of red shoes so badly that she uh, gets them, but then they are unable, she, they force her to basically dance until she dies. Actual ballet characters were cast to create a sense of realism in the dance. So Moira Shearer, uh, the main character, is an actual dancer. She's not an actress first, although she does an excellent job of acting. That's not a criticism whatsoever. But it makes these dance scenes so much more believable and interesting and beautiful. So, as I mentioned, this is one of the last Technicolor films. And this film, a lot of really major contemporary directors cite... The Red Shoes as a film that heavily influenced them. So Scorsese loves this film. He actually did a, what's the word I'm looking for? Restoration, there we go. Uh, restoration of The Red Shoes a few years ago. And uh, for, Coppola has also cited it, Brian De Palma, Wes Anderson, so many uh, directors who are known for their really striking visuals. So something wonderful about this film is that there's a lot of visual experimentation. It's so beautiful. Even its scenes that aren't these big ballet scenes are just so pretty. Um, they actually used these post-processing techniques during the 17 minute long ballet scene, which sounds really boring right now, but I promise it's really cool. Uh, they use sort of like pre, excuse me, pre-CGI, so they use some really neat post-processing stuff that 
will look sort of like CGI, but it's not. It's done practically. And they use uh, a lot of metaphor through uh, for both the ballet and to express characters' feelings, as well as Vic and Descent. I'm not sure why I didn't finish that. Um, as well as Victoria's sort of creative descent and obsession as she has to choose between love and her art. Sorry, I'm all over the place in this video. So we are going to start the red shoes and uh, I hope you guys enjoy. <laughs> 